but to the best pop in the world, this is so creative. Popcorn. So I can get, I can get, come up here, young Skywalker. Young Sky, y'all, young, young Skywalker. Come up here, girl. Come up here. Both of us. If y'all pass these out to all the men in here, no matter how old they are, just pass them out to them. Okay? And then some more men back on behalf of the Christian Women's Fellowship. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I got a card last night from, uh, I started saying Deanie and John. <laughs> Jeannie and Don and the family says, I can't remember all the words, but some of them were kind of out there because it said I was dignified, so I, <laughs> but it said as, a, as the eagle said from the turkeys who love you. It was pretty cool. I meant to bring it today. Pastor David, you want to go ahead and open it? Yes. Okay, I'll read the card. <laughs> okay, if I can. If you ever wondered whether you made an impact on somebody else's life or the things you shared have inspired hope and courage or you have lived in a way that shows faith and integrity, oh yes, you have. That's so awesome. You make a difference every day. Thank y'all so much. Thank God for you and your ministry. We love you and your family. Our prayers are with you daily. Love Christian Women's Fellowship. That is, thank y'all so much. That is so, so awesome. They're awesome, aren't they? And thank you for it. Thank you so much. All right. Ten, top ten reasons it's good to be a man. Aren't you glad you're, men, aren't you glad you're a man? <clears throat> Watch this. Watch this now. <clears throat> top ten reasons it's good to be a man. Phone conversations are over in 30 seconds flat. <laughs> Except for mine. Except for mine. Okay. Oh, I said, don't even go there. I said, yeah, I'm going there. All right. Watch this. This is cool. A five-day holiday requires only one suitcase. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. When clicking through the channels, you don't have to stall on every shot of somebody crying. I see this. Guys in hockey masks don't attack you unless you're playing hockey. <laughs> that was cool. Okay, there it is. Let's play hockey. All right. This is my one of my favorites. You only need two or three pairs of shoes, and that's usually pushing it. All right. My wife said this here is the gospel of everyone. Karma can't just tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> y'all guys, y'all know what I'm talking about. Your wife goes, all of a sudden, they got to do it. They got to rebuild the transmission, put a whole new engine in. You go find out it was points and plugs. Amen. Uh, number seven. Look at this. You can admire Clint Eastwood without starving yourself to look like him. <laughs> I watched Clint Eastwood yesterday. He's pretty cool. I watched The Unforgiven. Uh, Bethany was watching some kind of Disney channel because uh, you have two TVs in this room and I was sitting over here watching watching uh, Clint Eastwood she's over there watching The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Disney I'm thinking well okay if I got to choose between the two <laughs> alright number eight gray hair and wrinkles only add character to you look at all these characterized men in here look at all these look at all guys in this character that's enough character in here to start a comic book. Look at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. We can do our nails during one traffic light. <laughs> Don't have to stop thinking about that one for a minute. I, oh, that's funny. All right. Uh, Linda, one day, her back was hurting. I said, you're trying to do your toenails? I'll do them for you. She said, oh, that's so sweet, dear. And when I got through, she looked at her feet and she says, no matter how sweet it is, remind me never to let you do that again. <laughs> I said, why? She says, look, I dipped my fit toes in the bottle. <laughs> I said, well, I may have got a little off the nail. She said, a little off the nail. You may have got some on the nail. The rest of them was on my feet. All right. I still love that one. We do our nails on the traffic light. Watch this one. If another guy shows up at the party in the same outfit, you just might become lifelong buddies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. Okay, I got the 
top, top 12, right? There you go. Watch this. Oh, I love this. Matter of fact, y'all, y'all, when Bethany comes to church next Sunday, I want y'all to know something ahead of time. She's got a, a, a negative vacuum because she has a, a tumor almost the size of a small football inside of her, and it's dying, and there's a hole in it. And so they put a negative pump, and they filled it full of stuff, and it's sucking out all the time. Sucking out all the stuff. The stuff she's wearing a bandage for, she's not doing anymore because it puts it in a pump. The only thing is the pump breaks wind about every five minutes. It goes. So I told her, y'all got to think of it, who was sitting by her, I told her, I said, when you get to church, it starts going, just go. <laughs> so if you're sitting in church and you hear it go off, Mother Beth is going to be pointing at somebody. <laughs> All right. Here it goes. <laughs> the occasional well-rendered well -render, well belch is practically expected. <laughs> All right. And the greatest thing about this is we get to be dads. Oh, Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Give Lord a hand. I won't keep you long because I need to get back to Bethany, but I do want. To, I didn't want to pass this opportunity. I thank my brother for filling in last Sunday, and you were awesome. Especially when you said it right, right about here. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, go ahead. I heard him say me how hard you work, and he said, "Right about here, brother, they'd be telling the jokes." <laughs> <laughs> Here they get me to, it was awesome. Absolutely. You were awesome off the hook. Awesome. Ready? Here we go. Watch this. It's time for us to claim our destiny. All right? Never underestimate the power of the Father. I was sitting in, in, in Bethany's. I actually was right in this setting beside Bethany. Um, I've probably been there just about 24-7 for the last week. Since last Saturday night, I've been there just about 24-7. Left a couple times for some things, but... And Linda stayed there last night, but Linda's it hurt her so bad, I've been getting her to go home at night, and I've been staying there. So sometimes it's me and Linda, sometimes it's just Linda, sometimes it's me. But this last time she was there 24-7, and I was in there in and out. This time I'm in there 24-7. Uh, but but Bethany, Bethany, bless her heart, I was writing this, and I was thinking about her. So if this seems, when you look at this message today, I just, uh, ask you to think about it uh, in a way that different than you've ever thought about it before. Because I wrote this different than I've ever wrote it before. Okay? I was sitting there with Bethany when I wrote this. Okay? So, y'all just think about that. Alright? Now, 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 watch this. I want you to pay careful attention to this because this is very, very, very powerful. Matter of fact, we're not going to read the scripture to start with because we've got so many scriptures. We're just going to pray. Okay? Let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for these awesome men that are here today, God. And the ones, Lord, I get a chance to work with these guys all the time, and all of them are absolutely awesome. God, I thank you for what they mean to me, and I thank you for what they mean to you. And Lord, I thank you, God, for the opportunity to be a father. And Lord, I thank you right now for my hero, Bethany, Lord. And, and again, I was beside her, guiding her and comforting her during all this, while she was also guiding me and comforting me. I ask you right now, Lord, to, to bless her today. In the name of Jesus, we pray the church said. Amen. Amen. All right, so here we go. Never underestimate the power of a father. You know how much power we have? I mean, can y'all guys do that? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Do that. Do that. Come put your arms up. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Get ready. Here we go. Every man in here, whether you have a birth child, or not. Whether you have actually fathered children through your own genes or your father or somebody else's children, you know, uh, I've got a chance, I've, I've got a unique chance to, to father two kids and adopt a kid and then be a stepfather to two kids. And so uh, I remember that song by Brad Paisley that said, I hope that I'm half the man that he didn't have to be. You know, that's a very powerful song, very powerful song. But, but, but here it is. All of us were called, we're all called uh, to be a man. And when I say a man, I mean a man. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, not some manly pan, but really be a man, you know. Uh, and, and we're called to be leaders, and we're called to make a difference. And, and something I want to get in everybody's head today, everybody's head, 
especially the dads, is, and the Lord's kept telling me this, God said, Lord, you know, uh, uh, something that several nurses and doctors told me in the last week, and that was, when, when Bethany said, they said, well, you look just like your daddy, you look just like your mom, and Bethany said, thank you, and then she'll go, you know, I'm adopted, and, and, and she don't have to tell them that, but she tells them that, and when she tells them that, and tells them a little bit what she went through before we adopted her, and they'll say, God knew what he was doing. When he put y'all two, all y'all three together, he knew what he was doing when he put his hand in the mix. And so, again, while I was sitting there with Bethany, the school board spoke to me and said, it's not a mistake that you're her dad. And it's not a mistake that she's your daughter. And I want you to understand something. Every man in here, it's not a mistake that you're a dad. Matter of fact, some of y'all feel like you're a mistake. You feel like you mess up all the time. I mess up all the time. Good Lord. You know, uh, uh, I'd carry around Charmin with me and carry around Bounty. I'm always messing up. You know, but you know what? Uh, again, it's not a mistake. Look at look, one of you men look at another man and tell him it's not a mistake that you're there. Tell him. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. You may have gone through some rough times, but it's not a mistake that you are a dad. Uh, uh, some of y'all might cook a good steak, but you're not a mistake. Amen? So now, here's what I want to show you. For just, like I said, I want to be kind of quick about this. Uh, did you know, again, never underestimate the power of the Father. Again, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting here with Bethany, and the Lord just starts ministering to me. So I start writing it down. Uh, as a matter of fact, she went to sleep. She, she's good for about 15 to 30 minutes, then she got to sleep for a couple hours. And so she was sleeping, sleeping during this time. And so uh, uh, as she's sleeping, the Lord just started ministering to me. I'm sitting by her bed. And again, the Lord spoke to me and said, to tell every, all, all you guys, not just me, but he spoke to me specifically at this time, but he said, give it to everybody. Your children are your divine assignment. Wow. Your children are your divine assignment. And again, if you don't have any birth children, there's other guys that are looking up to you that tell you your divine assignment. There's people you work with, again, that come up and look up to you. That is your divine assignment. Assignment, but especially your children, are your divine assignment. So now, now, God has called us as our divine assignment to to provide fathers that spiritual, emotional, and physical encouragement. You know, uh, we, we can't afford to be beat down all the time. You can't beat your children down all the time. The Bible says, "Don't anger your children," because if you anger them, they're going to grow up angry, and they're going to grow up with a bad attitude about a whole lot of things. So, so if you find somebody that's angry, I'm going to tell you something about it. You meet a person that's angry all the time, I'm going to tell you something. You may get aggravated with them and not be able to be around them, but if you want to really help them, understand something. If you get around an angry person that's angry all the time, underneath that anger is hurt. If you can peel away, peel away the onions, peel away one at a time, one leaf at a time, and peel it away or one, one, one peel at a time, under that, under that anger is hurt. And if you can find a way to ask God to show you how to help them deal with that hurt, number one, they'll stop being angry all the time. And number two, you'll, you'll wind up being a good friend of that person. So, so, so again, God's called us to be spiritual, emotional, mental, uh, physical encouragers. And, and, and so today, again, the Lord spoke to me. It's like I was just sitting there and he was kind of, you know, going, I, I was kind of feeling good about some stuff and I wasn't feeling good about others. I have to admit, sometimes I was sitting there going, ouch, 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 ouch. I thought that the nurse would come in and give me some band-aids a couple of times. Watch. It's time to check ourselves. Ask ourselves. As parents, as grandparents. You know, uh, Emmy and Anna Lane come up yesterday. So I took them down to the window. I took them out of the room. And, and right, down, right down the hallway is a big window. You can look out. And uh, there, I can't even talk. Daniel and Michelle said, look, don't carry them downstairs because we're not going to... We're getting ready to leave. We can't stay a whole long time. So just keep them. We can see them so we can tell them it's time to go. So I'll be right down, right down here. So I was down the other end of the hallway looking out, the, looking out this great big old set of windows. And we were playing. And, and next thing I know, I mean, there were some people that were groaning because there's some sick people in that cancer center. And, and it seems like there's a death just about several, several times a week there's a death up there. It's just bad stuff going up in that cancer center. And, 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 we're sitting up there and I'm hearing this guy groaning in the next room. As I look over at Emmy and I look over at Adeline, and, I said, and the grandpa kicked me in. And so instead of hearing him groaning, all of a sudden, watch this. I went, I'm a gummy bear. 
Yes, I'm a gummy bear. Da 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 da. And all of a sudden, Emily starts going, I'm a gummy bear. I'm a gummy bear. And Emily's going, I'm a, I'm a gummy bear. And so I said, we've got to keep it real low because people are sick. And so we danced. And we just danced and danced and danced out of there in the hall. I thought nobody was looking. And so I carried the girls out because we had some gummy bears. And so I carried the girls out with their mom and dad. And when I'm coming back in, one of the nurses looked over me and she said, Hey, Grandpa, I saw you down there dancing with your granddaughters. <laughs> and I said, Well, we're too loud. She says, No, y'all are precious. You know, so, so again, remember, you know, that time was a chance for me to minister to my grandchildren. So again, think about your potential. Everybody here has got potential. Every man here, you got the divine potential because you are not, it's not a mistake that you're called to be a father. It's not a mistake that you're called to be a leader. And because it's not a mistake, God provides everything you need to do what you got to do to fulfill your divine potential. So, so I, I sit back and I hear this all the time. You know, uh, when I'm ministering to people, it always, there's a difference in counseling and life coaching. Counseling, you dig in the past. Life coaching, you kind of just kind of jump to the front. And so I get a chance to do both. And I love life coaching because I really like to go to the front and keep going to the future. But it seems like I'm always getting stuck back in the past with folks. And so, so I see people as having problems. And, and along the way, here's something they were asking their dads. That, that dad never really heard them ask. I want you to think about it. Think about you and your dad. Were these some of the questions you want to ask your dad or you ask all the time and you just really never said it out loud? That, do you, is there really affection? That, do you love me, dad? Can I be myself around you, Dad? Do you accept me as I am? Are you proud of me? Have I got affirmation? Are you watching me? Have you got attention on me, Dad? Did I do a good job? Am I a smart kid? Am I receiving approval? You know, and, and, and some of the stuff that we find out, actually, uh, the more I study, sometimes I look back at when I was first starting out as a father, I'm going, wow, if I only had a nun, I would have done it a little bit different. But of course, God knew what we needed, and so, so you got to trust God in that part. But once you get it, you better hold on to it. So watch this. Watch this down. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to claim our destiny today. The descriptions of our Heavenly Father and His care for His children is the path that we should walk. Again, the description of our Heavenly Father and of our Heavenly Father and His care for His children, us. Is the path that earthly fathers should take. So here we go. I, I, I just uh, I, again, I was working on another entire, entirely different sermon, and and two days ago, uh, the Lord just spoke and said, "No, no, can it get rid of it?" And here's where I want you to go. And, and so, I, and so I said, "Okay, Lord." And, and of course, if I knew it was going to be that ouch, I might have. I felt like I was handling the cactus the whole time I was doing it, but I said, "Okay, ready?" I'm doing acrostic with Father. The first thing, it's time for us to claim our destiny. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Deuteronomy 20 and 4. First thing, God's called the fathers to be the fighter of the family. I love this verse. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to do this as a sermon someday. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you. In other words, God's saying, my presence is with you. Our children need our presence. A lot of times we try to replace our presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, with presence, P-R-E-S-N-T-S. -E -E I remember one time, Daniel, I was coaching a football team. I coached all of Daniels. I mean, I was coaching the school. I, it was amazing. The Lord opened up doors. I was coaching in the school and uh, with teachers and stuff. We were out there coaching them. We were coaching football. And one day, uh, Daniel... I was saying there were some guys that, there was three or four guys on the team that their dads were all business owners and they had the fanciest stuff you could get. There was a sporting shop in Smithfield that, that, that everything was $100 or more. It was just everything was really expensive. I would go to that, to that store, or I'd go to the Nike shop and I would get the stuff that was very competent and nice but it was only like $30 or $50 and they were having $100 and $200 their gloves were $200, $300 their gloves were $50 and and, and still they were nice clothes. They were very, very good stuff. And, and, and one day, 
Daniel looked at all those guys with all that fancy stuff, the fancy cleats and the fancy gloves and the uh, whatever. This is baseball, thank you, this time, not football. Whatever it was, they, 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 Daniel was looking at all their stuff. And Daniel said, y'all were some very lucky guys. And they said, why are we lucky? He said, look at what your daddy has bought you. And every last one of him, he come home and told me about this, crying and told me about this. He said, every last one of them would look, look at him and said, we'd rather have what you've got. And Daniel said, I've got $50 cleats, and i got a $50 glove. Y'all got $200 stuff. And they said, no, you got a daddy who cares. And you got a daddy who comes out here every day and practices with us. You got a daddy who travels with us and takes care of us. Said, we would give everything we got if we could have a daddy to come spend time with us like that. So Lord spoke with that today. It's not the P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S that counts. It's the P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E -E -E that counts. Amen? Just like right now with Bethany, we had all kinds of plans to do some stuff, and now all we're doing is trying to keep her alive. But you know what she, she desires more than anything? P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Amen? I'm learning some very valuable lessons all over again at a whole different level with Bethany right now. So, the Lord will go for you, goes with you, and watch this, to fight against your enemy. What youngins need to see is us showing our power for them. Us standing up for them. Us making a difference in their life, not just walking away, you know, giving them a present, walking away, and not like nothing even matters anymore. We can't pick our head up from the television, pick our head up from a book or a, 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 or a, a clipboard or something. But they need to see that we're interested in them. We're there, there for them. And we've got our power. And all of that but it says, and to save you. Here's what every kid needs to see from their father. Presence. Be there. Power. Actually pour into their life. And number three, protection. They need to know that you're there to protect them. Yesterday, Linda, when Linda's walking, because Linda's back hurts and all of her, she hurts all over. We were walking and we got a wheelchair or something or a shopping cart. Linda says, let me hold it because it makes me feel better to push up against the formal back. Well, yesterday we were walking to the, we had a long walk to the cafeteria. Bethany really messed up. She shouldn't have gone that far, but she had in her head she wanted to go. She's stubborn like that. She got that from her mom. <laughs> <laughs> that well, so I, I said, Bethany, you know your mama likes to push against the car. We got a wheelchair, and it's really nice wheelchair. It's a whole, don't even look like wheelchairs. It's like something out of a uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. These are really awesome chairs. Uh, you know, again, they don't even look like wheelchairs. And uh, they're white and blue. And the only problem is they got to have more Duke blue on. We got too much Carolina blue on. And so, <laughs> and so I said, Bethany, do you want to push this cart so you can steady yourself? <laughs> and she said, no, Dad. You just get beside me. And she's like, on me. Like, 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 don't let go. Whatever you do, don't let go, Dad. And every we go through the hall, she grabs that arm. She don't want that thing. She wants me. Again, our kids, they see that we're concerned about them, and we'll get in there with them, and we'll fight, and we'll be there for them. So, so first, again, it's, it's, it's be a fighter. Be a fighter for your, for your family and for your kids. Number two, it won't take long, I told you. I love this. And, and I, I ask God to show me specific Verses that would go along with how he was talking to me about these words. Attentive. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins, yet none of them have escaped the notice of God? Do you know that God has been to every sparrow's funeral since the beginning of time? Isn't that cool? God has been to every, he's attended every sparrow's funeral because it says not one of them is when they die. He says he, he does he knows every one of them when they fall on the ground. And even the hairs of your head have been counted. God knows how many hairs we got. Some of us he don't have to count so hard. <laughs> 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 He's having to count this and this with me, praise God. Here we go. Do not be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. And so again, attention. You see, part of attentive, being attentive is when I'm showing my kid attention, it means I'm actually showing them more than just attention. I'm showing them their worth. Think about it. 
When you show your kids, your wife, whoever, when you show them attention, it shows their worth. If you can't get your head up out of that Bible because you're so holy, you've got to read five more scriptures before you can talk to them. I've got to get in my three chapters today. You hold on and get through my three chapters today. And when I get through, I'll help you. God gave me the biggest lesson on that. Years ago, I was working swing shift, and I was trying to, we were starting the church, trying to pass the church, and I was also uh, a Boy Scout, Scoutmaster. And so there was too much going on between being a Scoutmaster, being a, working a swing shift, and uh, uh, being a pastor. It was just way too much. And as the church kept growing, more things were going on. I was having to drive back and forth to the church. And I was driving 26 miles to the church. I'd be gone for hours. I'd come back and forth, and, and so DC would say, D.C. had a project in the Boy Scouts. And D.C. said, Daddy, can you help with this project? I said, I will, son, but right now I've got to go to work. All right. Then he came back and said, well, Daddy, can you help my project? And I said, well, right now I've got to go to church because somebody's in the hospital. He said, okay. Then he come back and he said, Daddy, can you help my project? Well, we're working with the Boy Scouts. I've got to leave. I've got to take care of all of y'all. I just can't take care of yours right now, but I'll be back. And then every time he come to ask me, I tell him, i got a wedding to do or a funeral or i got something to do at work and i got to go to work. And so finally it was on a Christmas. I finally got a couple of days off at Christmas. And my brother was visiting my dad who was across the street from us. And I saw D.C. coming out of this project. He said, well, bring it here so we can work on it now. He said, oh, Dad, don't worry about it. He said, Uncle Gary's going to help me. You go pray for somebody or something. I said, right then, I looked over at Bear, and I said, I said, right here, and I've missed the whole point. When you show your kids and your wives and your, and, and your family attention, no matter what kind of attention it is, it's positive attention, of course, no matter how long it may be, because it may just be quality versus quantity. But still, if you can show them some, you know what they feel? They feel like they're worth something. None of that, but then, watch this, being attentive as you watch. You watch. You're paying attention to what's going on. You're there in case you have to jump underneath them and, and, and catch them and hold them and do whatever. So again, Bethany right now, that's the biggest two things she wants right now in that hospital room. Is, am I worth something, Daddy? She told the nurse yesterday, she said, you know what? She said, my daddy and my mama have showed me something. She said, next to God, during this whole thing, she said, next to God, they showed me I was number one. And I said, girl, that's the way it's always been. You just ain't seen it like this. I said, now you're getting a chance to see it. Heavy. And she says, yes. She said, I'm telling you, Dad, I feel it more than ever. I know I'm number one. And, and, and thank you for caring. I said, thank me for caring. I said, okay. <laughs> because it's at the o'clock. See time? Y'all see that? Look, that's so cool. Watch Here's the clock watch. And it says time. Isn't that cool? <laughs> you know, the, my idea of intellectual stimulation is counting to 10 with Big Bird, okay? <laughs> All right. Hebrews 13 and 5. Time. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And in, in the Greek, it goes a little bit deeper. In the Greek, it says, never, never, Never will I leave you. Never, never, never will I forsake you. In the Greek, but they want to really stress something, they would say the words multiple times. And so in the Greek, it doesn't say never. It says it two or three times. I mean, this is such a powerful thing God's talking about. And again, this is what your kids need. Here, here's the time again. Watch this. <coughs> leave. He said, I'll never leave you. He's talking about a physical thing now. I'm here. You see me. I'm here. I'm going to make time for you. Never again did I hear D.C. say, you just go pray for somebody, Daddy. You go ahead. You're too busy doing all the church stuff. You're too busy working at Pride and Gamble. You just go take care of that. Uncle Gary's going to help me. Cut like a knife. I said, it'll never happen again. It never did. Leave a physical thing. And forsake us emotionally. You can trust 
I want to spend time with my children. I want to spend time with my family. And I want to make sure that it's not just physical, but it's going to be emotional. There's going to be that divine connection in there. Because that's what your family needs. And husbands, we are the ones responsible for making sure this happens. Amen? Okay, y'all guys looking at me like a, like y'all wanting to throw something up here. Please, if you do, a Big Mac would be nice. <laughs> if it was hot. <laughs> okay. They need help. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be afraid and tremble. This is, this is the Old Testament version of what we just read. For the Lord God goes with you. you he will not fail you or abandon you. And of course, I love this. God is our refuge and strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Uh, again, I was sitting there and, and, and I'm thinking, I'll be sitting in that chair and Lord knows they got seated. Did y'all know they got seated posturepedic chairs at the hospital? They're seated posturepedics. They got a real thick cushion and they got all... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was saying. No, they're doing the fusion center. In the fusion center where Beth is getting that four-hour treatment, oh, they're hot. They're good. They got heaters on them and they got vibrators and they got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but they're not that worried about the people sitting with you. <laughs> but, but I'm sitting there and about the time I get to sleep, I hear Beth go, Dad, Dad. I go, what is it, Beth? And she'll go, I need some more water. I say, I do too. When you get yours, get mine. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I'm hooked up. And I said, well, I'm out of that gas. So we were sharing it. Go ahead, go get us some. I played with her. You know, it's all right. Again, our kids need to know that if push comes to shove, we'll drop what we're doing to help them. It's a very powerful, powerful statement. I see this. I love this one, too. You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If then the Lord and the teacher washed your feet, so also you washed the feet of another. For I gave you an example that you should also do as I did to you. John 13, 13, and 16. Again, I was looking up stuff for example, how God spoke when he was examples. This is the greatest one. Other than the cross, this is the greatest example. <coughs> and he actually said, this is the example I want you to follow. And I thought about this, and I thought it was the D.C. and Daniel. All their life coming up, and I talked to Bethany. And that was, watch this. And this is the scripture does this. Watch this. Never forget, number one, where you came from. Never forget it. Whenever you think you're so big, you're so bad, you're so smart, you know, that, 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 that you're above and beyond. Never forget where you come from. I tell the boys that all the time. You know, uh, and I watched them over the years. Now, now sometimes it got them in trouble because uh, 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 Bethany come to me and, of course, they finally got her in trouble. Bethany's working with these people, and, and I said, Bethany, I don't think these are good people. That's why she moved out of the house. I said, Bethany, I don't think these are good people for you to be around. She said, Dad, you be around these kind of people all the time. I said, no. I said, I minister to those kind of people all the time. I don't stay with them. You're around them. And she says, yeah, but I said, I'm going to tell you, I sense it, I see it, I know it. These guys are on drugs. And she says, well, you've ministered to drug people all the time. She said, I want to be like you. And I said, Bethany, I'm trained. I'm 50-something years old. I am trained. And, and I don't mind up being part of it. I come into it, and I help them get out of it. You're going to mess around and you're going to get in trouble. And she did. But the whole point of it is she kept saying, I'm trying to be like you, Dad. I'm trying to be like you. I want to help them. And they took advantage of that, and that's how she got in trouble. But, again, never forget where you come from. And always treat others like you want to be treated. Those two right there will take you a long ways. And if fathers, if we can put that in our child's minds, wow, that's a powerful, powerful thing. I'm just through. I told you it won't be long today. One more. One more. Fathers are in the restoring business. Now, I'm not talking about a 48 Ford either. He restores my soul. He lives me to pass the righteous for his name's sake. I just chose that one because of what that means. When a sheep, two things happen. Either the sheep gets wet and falls over and rolls over on its back, or it gets full and it falls down and rolls over and it gets on its back. It's helpless. 
Because when a sheep gets on its back, it can't do anything. It just lays there. And if somebody doesn't see that sheep, watch it, watch it all the time. Know it's worth and watch it all the time. Eventually, the gas is built up in that sheep, and I'm not kidding. The sheep will literally explode. Insides explode because the gas built up. And so the shepherd, because he knows they're worth it, and he's watching them, and he's protecting them, and he's with them, all this stuff that we talked about, this is the last one, take all those things, because he's their fighter, he's attentive to them, he's spending time with them, he's helping them, he's the example before them, and now he's the one bringing restoration. Because he looks and he sees that sheep turned upside down, and that sheep uh, uh, helpless because it can't move, and because either because it got wet or because it got full one or the other, but it's there and it's doing its legs and eventually it'll swell up till it blows up. What he does is he goes gently, goes to the sheep gently, and he takes the sheep and he rolls it back over and he sets it on his feet so the gases will go away. You know what that's called? When the shepherd reaches down and catches that sheep and he picks it up and sets it on his feet, that's literally in the shepherd talk, it's called restoring the sheep's soul. So, fix it up, turns it over, that's restoring the soul. I can't think of the times in my life, in my youngest, especially these in Denver, they were preacher's kids. But I did find out why preacher's kids were so mean. You know why? Because they hung around the deacon's kids. <laughs> that's a joke, y'all. Okay. The reason, you know, the reason a lot of times why you think the preacher kids are always the meanest is because they're the ones that you're looking at the most. So while you're watching them, the other kids are getting away with murder. You're watching the preacher's kids. Plus the preacher kids sometimes are held to such a high standard that it, it puts too much pressure on them and they can't live up to it. So, so my heart goes out to preacher's kids everywhere. I've always wanted to minister to preacher's kids because of that. But here we go. What's this? God's called us fathers. To help bring things upright again in their life. When they're upside down, maybe it's because they messed up in school. Maybe it's because they messed up with a, with a friend or they messed up. Like Bethany, when she got messed up uh, with those people that I asked her not to mess with, and she messed with them anyway. You know, I told her, I said, I, I, mean, I was right there the whole time, but I right there, I said, okay, now that all this is going down and everything's going through, who's here with you, Bethany? Were your friends here with you? She said, no, Dad, they're all running. I said, who's here with you? He says, uh, you and mom. I said, I want you to remember that. And by the time we got everything restored and got her back up on top of her feet, the cancer hit her. And now she's back over. But now, with the daughter's help, we're trying to bring her back up. But still, again, fathers, again, and again, and again, it never stops. They never get too old. They need you to be a fighter, be attentive, ready for them time, constantly help, be an example for them, and help keep bringing restoration in their life. If you will do that, why? Matter of fact, that's how you claim your destiny. You're a kingdom man. We're different. We walk to a different, we walk to a beat of a different drum. You know, I, I was feeling so good the other day. I come back up, I was downstairs, and I come up, and I come up. There was a woman pushing her dad out. He had cancer. He was, was pitiful. She was pushing him out. And her boys were with her. And as they are pushing him out, I waited. And as I was waiting, finally, she looked over at her boy and said, Hold that door for that young man. I went. And I said, Are you talking to me? And the lady says, Yes, young man. And I was old enough to be this girl's daddy. And so I come back, I told Linda, I said, <laughs> I said, I was at the elevator, and I said, they pushed out this old man, and I said, and the grandkids were coming out, and the mama, and the door was getting ready to shut, she said, hold the door up for the young man. She said, when they start calling you young man, you know what that means? And so much it means you're getting old. <laughs> no slack whatsoever, none. All right. Come on up here, BJ. God has called us to be kingdom men. You don't have to have a, you do not have to give birth to a child to be a father. There's people every day watching you. There's people every day that you're leading. 
There's people that every day that you're guiding. There's people that you don't even know is watching you. There's people, matter of fact, uh, wives, if you think you don't want your husband anymore, you think you, you can't handle your husband, he's aggravating, you want to get rid of him, I guarantee you there's 10 women that would take him. I heard somebody say, well, got any numbers? No. <laughs> <laughs> You got a few numbers to make some calls. We can, we can fix this today. We're not perfect, none of us. But we're called to the kingdom. We are called to make a difference. We are called to be mighty men of God.
about a lot of your sermons and Bible studies. I said, what's that? He said, there's something very special. I said, what is it, Eddie? He said that you always talk about God's got this. He says, you're always saying, God's got this. And I really didn't pay attention to that stuff. I didn't realize I said it so much. But yeah, I did. I went back and looked. There's a lot of times I said, God's got this. But it's been amazing to me because that's what Beth keeps saying. God's got this, Dad. God's got this, Dad. God's got this, Dad. I apologize to her for not getting her sooner to a cancer doctor, but I was following another doctor's advice, and she says, it's okay. You did what you did to do. It's okay. God's got this. Then I apologized to her for the day she was hurting under her arm. I thought she was playing. And so I got on a really sharp here at the church. I felt so bad about that once I found out she had cancer. I found out the next day, that's when I found out she had cancer. I'm thinking, good God, I was arguing with her about, you know, because that's, that's part of her making the poke cut stuff. And I apologized to her so many times. She said, Dad, don't worry about it. God's got this. God's got this. And all I can say to the fathers today is if, if maybe you felt like you blundered in some areas, just remember this, God's got this. He's going to take care of things. You know, uh, I got presents for Father's Day and all this stuff, but one of the greatest things I got this whole Father's Day, number one is me with Bethany, but number two, just Daniel this morning. Daniel said, Happy Father's Day, Pops, 143, which I love you. He said, Thanks for always setting the standard for me. That's worth a million dollars. Because I don't think I always set such a good standard. But in his eyes. Again. Look at something God's got this. Even if you messed up, God's got it. God's got it. The Bible says that he can restore the years that the cankerers took away. He can restore it. He can take care of it. Even if you messed up, God can take it and fix it give you a chance to, to, to take care of business. Amen? Tuesday night, we're talking about uh, God's purpose. So you don't want to miss that. Tuesday night. And if something should be going on with Beth like it was last week. I couldn't come last week because when Beth had got to the hospital, we, she was swelling. So we carried her to the hospital Saturday because there's anything different call us. So we called her and said she's swelling. Her feet and her belly swelling. They said bring her up here. So we brought her up there. And her pulse was 36. And that's not good. So by Tuesday night, her pulse was 106. And so they were trying to reel it back down. And so I really didn't feel like I could leave her. And so that's why I weren't here Tuesday night. I just feel like I couldn't leave her. Uh, but other than that, I'll be here Tuesday night. And I'll be here all Sunday. I couldn't be there Sunday because I was in the middle. Of, I was in the, in the uh, suite at the emergency room. I keep saying sweet because we were like 15 hours in those chairs, praise God. But, but they had Bethany on the bed. That was the most important thing. Bethany was on the bed. Bethany had constant attention. They took care of her in an emergency room. I couldn't have asked for any better care for her in that emergency room. Uh, and then that, that day they kept hollering, trauma team, trauma team. So it took so long to get to her because they were still taking care of her. It took so long to really get really deep with her because they told me the next day when the guards come in and told me, one of my friends said, you kept hearing trauma team, trauma team, trauma team. He said there was like five gunshot victims brought into the hospital. We were taking care of the gunshot victims. So it kind of put Beth and all of them on the back burner, you know. But, but again, again, uh, God's got this. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. Amen. Let's all stand. Brother Steve, you dismiss us in prayer, please. Let's pray. Father God, we, we love you, Lord. Lord, we, let us look to you where her help to be good father and be attentive to our kids and to those that love. Because we never know.